Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Capturing Your Love Show, where we talk about everything relationships, weddings, marriage, and so much more. Tonight we have on a phenomenal couple, Brian and Juliet, who give us a very, very refreshing perspective on what it means and what it looks like to relearn your spouse and relearn yourself as new parents. Let's jump in. Juliet and Brian, thank you guys for joining us on the Capturing Your Love show. I really appreciate you coming out. Why don't you uh, introduce yourself and tell us a bit about yourselves? I'm Brian. Um, I'm a husband and I'm a father and I work in the insurance industry. I'm Julie. Uh, I'm, an, well, I'm a new mom and I'm an occupational therapist at a school. Awesome. Recently, yeah. Very cool. What school? Um, executive education in Allentown. Very cool. It's a charter school. Cool, cool. So we're going to start off the show jumping into some deep questions about society and culture. You guys ready? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this first question has to do with the, um, the impact on relationships with digital communication. How do you two think digital communication affects relationships and dating today? I can start. Okay. okay. <laughs> I think that when you have access to everything online and you see something and you're like you're you almost compare a little bit so you're you see other relationships whether it's good or bad and then you kind of like unintentionally use that information so i I think it it has a lot of negative Mm -hmm. like aspects but more negative than positive um i feel like i don't know that's a good question i guess both but i think i guess it just depends you can be like oh you can either relate to it I don't know. You can. <laughs> I think I was gonna say. I think it depends mm-hmm. um, on how you use it. Um, sure. If you're just yeah, if you're mindlessly scrolling and you're just, you can use it as inspiration, or you can like she said, or you can use it as com- comparison. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of people, I think humans tend to compare mm-hmm. um, instead of being inspired because mm-hmm. um, it's a, a flaw of ours, and um, and I think social media takes takes advantage of that and. Um, like you said, like I said, you can make it a good thing, but um, overall, I think it's probably negative for mm-hmm. relationships. The comparison game is huge. Yeah. Very detrimental. Yes. But it is a refreshing thought to think that if you are using it the correct way, yeah. thinking about it the correct way, then there are immense benefits of That's digital right. communication. Yeah. yeah. So what do you two think, um, what are the key challenges do you two think couples face with building la- long-lasting relationships today, when you have this modern form of dating, um, that's a good question. I think yeah. nowadays every everybody meets through, like in a digital form, mm-hmm. right? So we we in a sense met through someone who met online. Mm-hmm. So um, I think nowadays that's how most people meet. Like you don't necessarily meet organically. Like you go somewhere and you like. Ca- I mean, I'm sure it happens, but it's usually through like yeah. forms of social media. Mm-hmm. Like, I think I was gonna, I was just gonna, to interrupt you. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I think there's like, um, you can like filter out, I guess, what you want more nowadays. But, um, but then also it's then people become so particular, mm-hmm. and and you don't give you know people maybe a chance because you're you're a little more shallow. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's kind of making people a little more shallow. They're they're maybe finding the right partner quicker, but they're I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's oh, there. It's question. exactly there's there there's positives and negatives. Mm-hmm. It's um, it's I guess it's yeah. It's mm-hmm. not one or the other. Um, in the Timothy Keller book we just talked about before we rolled, mm-hmm. there's a section on um, what prevents marriages from happening, and um, fear being the second one. Number one being extremely high expectations on who you want your life partner to be. So I think that goes hand in hand with you were saying, like when you see there's so many people out here, you see there's a lot of options. And the thing is, I think a lot of modern people, like a lot of people, they see all these options and they want the perfect option, but are they the perfect option? Exactly. So exactly. I think people need to work on themselves. Yeah, exactly. So how do you two balance or how have you balanced and are balancing now personal growth and growth as a unit? Um, that's a good question. Mm-hmm. These are hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the um, hard ones are first. Yeah. We, keep, we keep them at the start. 
I well, I guess since this last year of our lives were probably the one of the hardest years of our lives mm -hmm. being new parents, mm -hmm. but um, I think we got a chance to grow, it, honestly, individually and then together. So we had to learn ourselves again. We pretty much became two new people mm -hmm. as two new parents, and then figuring out how to like restructure it and then come back Finish. like as one. If that ma does that make sense? I don't know. Originally, it was like. Um, like, like she said in the beginning, it was, it was pretty tough for us. Um, yeah. you know, Amelia, she, uh, she, she wasn't sleeping, but mm. you know, that's every baby. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you have to get used to it. And, um, and we did, and then we, you know, so together we kind of like grew, but then I think individually we kind of both myself, she put herself more in the back burner than mm -hmm. myself, um, and like I, I continue to um, you know focus on my like health and, and fitness and, and and things like that mm -hmm. and um, and sometimes a little selfishly mm -hmm. and I think um, she needs to work on her her she needs to be a little I, more selfish yeah. um, and focus on herself. So I think as a couple, we're becoming more you know shifting more of we're going to focus more on her personal mm -hmm. growth as of right now. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's that's what that's just an issue I've always had though that's, right? so yeah, I'm that's, just like that's... I'm not like oh I'm such a selfless person but I just tend to naturally just put others like, yeah she just myself. she will she just will never yep mm -hmm. so yeah. great mom trait though it, it is but it's, it's also a it's really negative traits, that, trait it's, though it's, so. it's, it's what I, I fell in love with but it's also yeah it, it's you know sometimes I take advantage of it and it's not mm -hmm. I'll admit it's not the mm -hmm. the best you know but that's quality of mine. Good, good self-awareness. Yeah, yeah. What, on a very simplified level, what is putting yourself first look like? Like scheduling, uh, implementing something? Yeah, like, probably. Just more, just like, <laughs> it's more of a ske scheduling thing. Like, not that I was huge into working out, but just spending more like self-care type things. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, yeah, probably just that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is like, yeah, any, just, any self, you know, she's burn in both ends. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 You won't be able to continue. And she work and she works um full time as yeah. 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 She started. So. Yeah. So get back in the game. Yeah. yeah. Because you can only give as much as you give to yourself and yeah. pour into yourself. So if you're letting yourself burn at both ends, just know that eventually it won't work out. Yeah, well, that's pretty much what happens. It's like, well, that's and that's there's like a meltdown in the, in the begin. That's why we're, we are like transitioning where we're yeah. getting yeah a better uh, yeah. dynamic mm -hmm. with everything. You have to learn that when you have a exactly. kid. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't know what you're doing. You, you yeah, don't, yeah. You exactly. don't really know yeah. anything until it happens, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you both have a uh, family nearby? A close family nearby. Her, my family's, her family's closer. Five minutes. Yeah, well, and well, both our families were a huge help, but yeah, yeah. Um, her her mom, my mom stayed over for a, a while, while in the beginning, beginning. and she yeah, helped she us a lot. Yeah, yeah super helpful yeah. that family. Yeah. I never realized how much family matters. And yeah, yeah and and then yes. I've always like I don't know what people do that don't. I know. Uh, Where do you? Yeah. 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 So yeah. I was definitely yeah. very grateful. Mm -hmm. Um. You dated, then you got married. Now you've been married for almost three, three years. years. Yeah. Yes, almost August three. three years. How did your expectations of marriage differ from what you know now, being three years plus married? Hmm. Give me a start. You want? I can. Uh, you can start. Um, I was just gonna say I think even with just marriage, um. And, and, the, and the baby, but I guess we're talking just about marriage. Um, I didn't expect, it was kind of like when you're dating, everything's easy and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, and when you, when you're married, yeah, you, you know, we have a house mm -hmm. and we have responsibilities and stuff. So it's more than just the dating life. You have things together that you share and you have to, to, you know, complete tasks together. Mm -hmm. And I guess I never envisioned, I guess, I guess the responsibility part as much yeah. and how difficult that would be with, mm -hmm. um, you know, I just assumed everything's just like all fun and mm. um, and roses and stuff. And I, I know it's it's you have to put an effort and you have to make, like you said, intentional decisions. You have to go on date nights and things like that. You can't just if you just let it go, it, it it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. out. <laughs> I think like just to piggyback, yeah. I mean, that you're you hit it spot on. But when you're like 
I, I guess we're talking about parents too because I keep bringing it know, in, but it's hard to separate yeah, now the two. Well, well, yeah. Marriage is, is, is with you both. It's with your kids. Yeah, It'll true. actually be with your grandkids. Yeah. Mar- marriage as a whole is doing life as a unit. Yeah. Just anything that has to... Yeah. Has to well, well I was going to say, like, before Amelia, it you can kind of go about your day, like, <laughs> not separately, but you, you go to work, I go to work, mm-hmm. and then we come back together, yeah. we have dinner, and then we do the whole thing all over again. But then it's when you have another, like, human being that you're you have to share that life with and incorporate it changes the dynamic of like obviously you and your spouse right like get off work and yeah and we have to do like things instead of just like relax together yeah like so i mean it's it's great having her and we love having our like family unit and growing and as she's gotten older it's so much more fun but it's just learning how to do it together again Mm -hmm. almost it's a challenge right yeah yeah exactly it's learning how we we knew how to date no, we have to learn how It's to almost like married. redating, exactly. pretty much. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. New dynamic. <laughs> um, finances and career decisions. How do those goals affect your relationships and the decisions you make? Affect your relationship and the decisions you guys make? I how do you guys so. support each other? So before, before we had a baby, I always thought that I would continue working after, right? Mm-hmm. So I... I got my OT degree. I was very into like the career side of things. It was, I mean, I'm so passionate about it, but it's like once she came to the world, my world stopped and almost like my career was really put on the back burner because it's not like I didn't care about it, but I cared so much more about spending time with her. So I switched jobs so that I could stay home with her more. And it kind of like, well, we need to figure out a way to like kind of like like switch gears yeah. and be more of like a not a one income household but like which yeah we're which is which you could piggyback off yeah of, which is what when you're talking about personal growth I, I'm look I'm actually studying um, actuarial science right now awesome. um, I'm in the insurance industry so mm-hmm. we're, um, we're we're yeah we're trying to become a, a one income mm-hmm. household so so she can stay home and yeah. or at least and like part time yeah. mm-hmm. but um, because her being a mom is, it's the most important thing that we, we both value. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, and in terms of like finances, we, we, we both believe that, you know, we're in this together and, yeah, yeah. you know, we're going to do as much as we can to, to support Amelia and our family. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's the best thing that you yeah. could do. Give yeah. her the option. Mm-hmm. Like as long as you have the option, exactly. yeah, the option. Yeah. choose exactly. if you want to be a mom or, or let it and that's, whatever. Bef- that's what but we didn't anticipate we, before. before. Cause I, before I thought it was going to be kids, easier. We, we, <laughs> like, we didn't, you know, plan it out as much as mm-hmm. thinking. You know. I mean, we were both financially like, stable to yeah, have a kid. Stable. Yeah. But it's just, yeah, you mm-hmm. don't realize all the work and now, now what we now we do know what we want so now we're yeah. we're, we're working to like working towards that yeah, yeah. awesome yeah. very cool so let's jump into your love story okay. where did you two meet how did you meet what was the first connection like tell okay. us about it i can start okay. so my my high school friend at the time she came over to um introduce her boyfriend at the time um who was my best friend who was his best friend <laughs> and i don't know if you remember colin who was actually Brian's best, best man friend. in our wedding, mm-hmm. the tall mm-hmm. um, guy. Well, anyway, he saw me and he was like, oh, I have someone for you, basically. And he said that to you? Yeah. <laughs> and so then, I don't know how long after, but we ended up meeting at a bowling alley, like, over Thanksgiving break, I think. Yeah, it was like a double date. Yeah, yeah. like double date with them. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, it actually didn't go super well. <laughs> like we, she didn't like me. I thought that I didn't like you, but I didn't think we like. It wasn't really whatever. And then a whole like month and a half later, remember, we thought we're looking we at tried. the two quietest people. Yeah, so, so it was like yeah, pretty so. awkward. Do you remember his? I mean, you wouldn't remember, but Colin's speech was. This started in an awkward bowling alley yeah. date. It was really awkward. Aww. And then like a yeah like a month later, I think we went to. We the, just the tried movies. again, and we did another double date, and oh, it, yeah, it went yeah, better. Yeah. Uh, well, obviously, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> like. <laughs> but I know it's not like your typical. But they met on Tinder, right? So mm. how, what are the chances? I, like they know, met. Right. They didn't live near each other. No. He lived an hour away, mm. and so it was just funny, like how. Yeah. We the first, met. Yeah, mm. and then once we got comfortable with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Everything from there it was smooth. Sailing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, what was the first date? Bowling. Bowling. Date? We went to, we went to the promenade. Yeah, 
or we went to the promenades and then we went to Applebee's. Yeah. Promenades, yeah. Applebee's. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. So from those initial dates yeah. to you going, I want to propose to this girl. What what transpired? How did you get there? I just I knew a lot I of just years. <laughs> well, yeah, a lot of years. Mm-hmm. Um, but even just like from meeting her initially, it's just like you know, I came across other females before and I just there was just a certain I don't know there's just there was something about her that seemed mature mm. and um and motherly mm. that you know I was looking for a wife and mm. I thought that's that's something I, I really valued and um and she just you know she's beautiful and I I, I fell in love mm-hmm. right away and I I and she just she showed me with her family and, and how selfless she was with everything she does. I just I, I knew um, I knew I wanted to marry her mm-hmm. and I because I, I know how and she's a great mom, too. So I knew how she how good she would be, um, mm-hmm. you know, with her family and everything. Awesome. Yeah. So did you chat about marriage before you proposed yes. a little bit? Yes. Yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was like a conversation and I was in school at the time. So mm-hmm. I, we knew we wanted I wanted to graduate first because you had graduated you had your first job and I was getting my master's and he helped me through all that because I I, it was like a really hard program and then we got through that and then we talked we started talking about it after that so how involved like did she pick the ring no no no? so I was gonna say so she she wasn't expecting like the actual proposal like it was a surprise yeah yeah yeah. um I did get the approval of her of her father and and her mother Um, yeah but yeah, so what we did is um, I took her on a ho- horse and buggy around Bethlehem. Yeah. Beautiful. And then at the end of the ride, took we got off the, the step, let yeah. her off, and I got on my knee. Beautiful. And That's then there's awesome. a woman hiding to take pictures. Yeah. But yeah. she actually scared me because her flash. <laughs> I know you're like, I was like, whoa. <laughs> was it daytime or nighttime? It was night. It was so that's why. <laughs> it, was like, yeah. it was like nighttime downtown Bethlehem with yeah. the lights. And yeah. Stuff. Was it during Christmas time? Yes. Yes. Well, it was well, February. Sorry, it was right after Christmas. Oh, okay. Yeah. But they still had lights. Yeah. They, they do, yeah. I'm so beautiful. It was, yeah. Shut up, Bethlehem. That's awesome. Yeah, it was raining. So you were cold off guard, but how about the day of? Did you have intuition? That- I kind of did. So my sister a l- little bit gave it away. So she Your never... Nails. Yeah, she pushed me to do my nails, and she really never did that. But she, she knew that it was important that when I got pictures, like, because the woman, you know, I guess she must have known she was going to take pictures, but my hand, my nails looked yeah. okay. So, yeah. So she kind of gave and it And I was, like, dressed. I was just, like, I was oh, yeah. really dressed up. We were, like, going out. You're, like... What's going on? Yeah. Like, oh yeah. And then I kept asking. It was him. Valentine's Day, so it yeah. like had that going for me. <laughs> You're trying to hide it. Yeah, yeah. but I was really just. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So well, Valentine's Day also was significant because that's when we like that's started, we started dating, dating technically. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. How soon after the proposal did you get into wedding planning mode? So we were talking about this earlier. COVID happened right away. So we got engaged and COVID January happened like right away after. So we didn't see each other. I was treating COVID patients. So we got engaged and we didn't see each other for months. For our first two months, I think, of our... Of our yeah. Family. So we didn't do any like wedding planning in the yeah. beginning because we didn't really know what was going to happen. And we weren't seeing each other. The our, yeah. My ring was like being sized. Okay. So I didn't even have my ring. It and, wasn't even like you guys... And, no, and there was no one... Well, they, they weren't open so they you yeah because everything like was shut down right? yeah so it was but then as things got better yeah. like we started. we started it was still a little weird because people were doing like virtual tours and people were weird about covid did you have to do virtual tours some I of the so. places yeah. but we did go in person to some places yeah, but we, yeah mostly in person but but it was always a conversation like covid related mm-hmm. so it kind of like it was like I'm sure we asked you if you had a COVID. Yeah, probably. When we were... yeah, maybe I forgot. I'm sure. But um yeah, I'm sure we did. But yeah, th- uh and then eventually we started like really We started We didn't we didn't get married until what, like a year and a half after. Yeah, it was like yeah, a year Good amount of time. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Decent amount of time. To and play. we we visited a, de- a decent amount of places. Mm-hmm. Um Yeah, and I 
But Glassburn was yeah. Glassburn was a it was beautiful venue. Yeah, it was. It, it was a physical therapist at my work that told me about yeah. it. I never even heard of it, and I was and once I looked it up, I was like, oh yeah, this is cool. Beautiful space, yeah. space there. Yeah. Uh, Jandal just purchased Glassburn. Oh really? Jandal. Their first wedding venue. I'm like, what are you guys doing? Why are you? Wow. Why are you getting into this space? Now? I, I wonder if because like the gentleman was kind of getting older. I think. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Aww. They're dipping into it. They're just going to start scooping up all the wedding venues now. <laughs> oh. we'll see what happens. Yeah, right. But the venue itself, gorgeous for the getting getting ready area. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. A lot of room. The reception area, gorgeous. The mm -hmm. ceremony space that overlooks the flowers. Yeah. Yeah. Gorgeous. Which last, they I had think two my favorite options. part was the cocktail, like outside the cocktail. Yeah, it was nice. I, honestly, I, I like all, their entire like, space. It was really interesting. We went, we went back yeah, a year exactly. later. Actually, yeah, we got a fr late the year year later they gave us a free uh, honeymoon stay. Yeah, they do that. That's yeah, awesome. it was part of like the. I don't know That's if they still cool. do it, yeah. but yeah, that was pretty cool. So the uh, the wedding happened. Yeah. Tell us about it. What were you you know like reliving? Yeah, like um, how was it? What was it like? So I know it goes by so fast, mm. and it's kind of sad how fast it goes. But um, I remember that morning. I we were we were getting ready. We were panicking and. Honestly, the next thing I know is you guys came in and I was like, how are they here already? Because we were like, they were doing hair, that makeup. And all I remember, and I know this after the fact was it was pouring. And I didn't know it was pouring, but you came in dripping wet and someone said like, and you're like, no, no, it's not. It's sunny outside. It's the <laughs> like, only time we'll ever lie. <laughs> but, but the sun did come out. Literally, as we were about to take pictures, we went out and the sun came out. But um Sorry, I'm like talking. No, it. I was just gonna say it felt like a blur. It goes. Yeah, quick. It does. Quick. It does. Yeah, it was like I felt like I was getting ready in the morning, and then yeah, you you came and we were like taking pictures, and then it's we're dancing, and mm -hmm. and I remember they were like saying this is like the last the last song. song again. You're like, like what? It's already ten something. Yeah. Mm. We just started dancing. Yeah. But the first look was probably one of my favorite it, parts yes. of the day. Mm. That was the first look. Yeah. And then the letter reading. Right? Yeah, yeah. I think that was actually yeah that was my favorite part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you you both had such. <laughs> we just watched that video. Too. We just yeah. watched the last video. Yeah. yeah, good video. I really yeah. liked it. Yeah, it was the, like your yours was one of the first that we started in, like doing more for for really? the films. Yeah, yeah, like just adding more. Yeah, like natural sounds, adding more dialogue. Yeah. turned out really good. Yeah, I even liked the um, the drone drone shot. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, that was my favorite. Oh yeah, so um, within your control, what would you have changed? Of your wedding day, it's a good good question. Mm -hmm. I probably would have changed the room. This is so like <laughs> mute, but the room we got ready in. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> the it was just like super. It was probably maybe the rain and the heat, but it was so like damp in there. And then also where you guys took pictures in that big with the big window. Oh, I wish we would have had. That was an awesome room. Yeah, we had fun in there. We did. Yeah. <laughs> So when we look back, I was I was like, I wish we were in there. <laughs> when you compare the two of them, that was probably the better room. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you even have the option? Did they offer it? Um, I think they were in there hiding. Mm -hmm. I think they got you guys got stuck in yeah, that room because we were right outside. Yeah. yeah, and because we were doing the first look with my dad, oh, and then cool. once so we took all of my pictures by the fireplace right outside that door. Yeah, and it was then, a tougher room. Yeah, tougher room. I mean it was still really beautiful, mm -hmm. but I every time we look back, I'm like I like like the lighting of the windows, mm -hmm. but but I, I was and, just the get ready room. That's mm -hmm. it. <laughs> I was I don't think I would. There's nothing I would have changed. No, yeah. no, not that I can think of. Mm -hmm. I'm, I mean the the sun came out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's all that matters. Glorious. Yeah. Yep. What What do you two think um, individually was the biggest win, the biggest W, the biggest L of the day? So the biggest win, biggest loss um the winds definitely i was really worried about the weather so yeah. the fact that it rained and then stopped raining was a big win for yeah. me because we it was an outdoor ceremony thankfully it was like covered but we were walking from outside like we were still yeah. gonna be like the cocktail yeah. hour was outside so i remember like tracking the weather like the whole month that whole month like <laughs> we chose august because it was a dry month that's <laughs> why but i don't know a loss i know right that's good if there's no yeah loss. i mean yeah. I, I, the I was the only loss I would say is like, like our loved ones who weren't you that's know, true passed away right like yeah. your grandparents and yeah. and my grandparents yeah. who weren't, weren't able to be there. Other than that, um, it was all a win. <laughs> sure. We like Still well, well we well. honored them. We yeah. had like yeah. pictures of them. Yeah. And it was like that. Yeah. They were there in spirit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a fun day. Yeah, it was. Yeah.
Did you two go on a honeymoon? We did. What? How soon after? And what did you guys do? I got COVID. No. At my honeymoon. She got COVID from the wedding. Oh. So basically, Damn, how did we get it? <laughs> actually, there's, 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 there's the, the biggest. Fact. There's the biggest L. There, yeah, actually, there you go. That's the biggest. So this is the fun fact. Nobody got sick because we we told everyone. I think we probably told you guys, besides me and Brian's grandma. Yeah. That got sick. How did that happen? We don't know. But anyway, so we went to St. Thomas, mm -hmm. and it was beautiful. Oh, the second we got there, I got sick. So I spent I spent St. Thomas looking Laying at- Laying on a couch, couch, watching Dr. Phil, whatever. You got to take her back, bro. You got to take her it back. It was so bad. I would be like- Honestly, I would, I wouldn't I'd go back there. The, I'd be on the balcony, like, tanning. I was like- Are you okay? Right. Are you good in there? It was so bad. We gotta take her back. Yeah. No, we need a new destination. I'm traumatized by seeing Thomas now. Like, yeah. when I look back at pictures from it, you can see it in my eyes. Like, like death. Like, I, I got it really. Like, I didn't just get mild symptoms. I got it. took me out for like four It's days. a memory. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, now I laugh about it. But... Wow. Yeah. So people yeah. are like, where'd you go on your honeymoon? St. Thomas. That's so awesome. <laughs> Except it, was... it wasn't awesome. Yeah. But anyway. The, the last on. couple we had on. They went on their honeymoon right away. Yeah. The bride had COVID from the wedding. Yeah. And they were so, I believe, I quote, they said, we were so miserable. We just went home early. We just wanted we to should... go home. I, I think I wanted I to leave. Sure we made, but we just like couldn't, I think. I don't the, even know. The flight, we just like couldn't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Boo COVID. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah. Like... Yeah. That's too good. Well, um, maybe you'll go back or to a different, more... Yeah more enjoyable space greece. um yeah greece so how would you describe your relationship now versus right when you got married you've been married over 900 days how does it look now versus right after you got married well right after we got married obviously we didn't have a baby it was i don't want to say honeymoon phase-ish but everything was new it's exciting we had a big wedding and that well i mean i was sick for a period of time but then and then eventually you get more into like real life stuff and it was exciting when we found out we were pregnant and then we got to share that with our family. So I guess like fast forward, I don't want to say like we're like truly adulting, but like more like the... We were riding like the high of like the dating life. And yeah. The, you know, the, yeah, the honeymoon phase of everything. Um, and then yeah, it kind of like transitioned into reality and like real life and working all, like together on things yeah. not just i would say though that we're like actually. much stronger but than yeah, we, we were yeah we are so. much strong yeah i, I mean stronger. just by going through everything we did in the last year if you mm -hmm. compare though when we first got married like we've gone through even though we were we knew each other what 10 years now mm -hmm. the last year we probably have become the closest because we went through like a huge like life event mm -hmm. so so talk Talk about those milestones. Yeah. You said you got a house, you had a kid. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we actually had a house before we got married. Mm -hmm. We didn't officially move into it until, until we, were we were married. Mm -hmm. But um, we that was actually a really exciting time. Mm -hmm. It was really fun to, like, go look at houses. Yeah. And um, it was it was obviously stressful and, like, yeah. difficult because it was, it was right in the beginning of COVID, like, when before things was... went really crazy. So we were very fortunate, mm -hmm. like, to miss all of that. But... Um, it was fun to go and envision your life in these houses. And we had one that we like really loved and we like were so upset. I remember we were driving to the beach and we just like couldn't match to like what they wanted. We got and, outbid, yeah. Yeah, so we just like, we let it go. We were like, should we go back? Should we offer yeah. them more? Yeah. And it was really good that it didn't happen because the house we're in now has been so much better fit for us. Yeah, like so. then I was like, it was like what, a week or two later, not even, yeah. we found our house now and we're like, we love this and like we're so glad we didn't get the other house yeah yeah so, so like that, things happen for a reason yeah but um, and then yeah and then a couple of years later amelia came and now we're filling the house with toys <laughs> i filled the house with toys one more bedrooms filled out yeah um, we're filled up so um, yeah everything's going well we're just like i said we're building a new dynamic yeah, yeah. talk a little bit about amelia what you've been like how's it been parenting her she is crazy what's her birthday January 30th. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so we just celebrated her first birthday. She's strong. She's so funny. Physically strong? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she's physically strong. So she started walking at like nine and a half, ten months. So she's running now. Yeah. Um, she is so smart. 
and um her like giggle is very contagious Aww. yeah and she's got two little dimples <laughs> and all of her teeth yeah. yeah so she she's a lot of fun mm. but she's also very challenging yeah, like she being... she's smart and that's what, I think she's smarter than us. That's combined. what they, well, they say. They, <laughs> like, uh, well, so our pediatrician told us, I don't know, they were just trying to give us, you know, whatever. Just the the tougher to the baby, the smarter the baby. Yeah, so. that's what they told us. Yeah. But, but yeah, because she picks up on, on everything. She's, she's, and she's got her own mind. Um, like, she knows what she wants. She knows what she wants. Like, yeah, yeah. But, just like her mommy and <laughs> Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So, what what do you see in each other, maybe that you've seen in the past before Miria came? What do you see in each other that's such a benefit and a, a positive influence on Amelia? Like, characteristically about yourselves? I can go. Or do you... you can go. I would, well, because it's easy for me because her motherly uh, mm -hmm. characteristics and um, just... I know that Amelia's always... She's always getting the best of the best. Mm -hmm. Um you know, That's a good she, way to phrase it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She's whether it's nutrition, food, whether it's mm -hmm. activities, whether it's sleep, what, whatever. I know that she's being taken care of in the best possible way, and I. That's just something I I love about Julie. Thank mm -hmm. you. Well, since I'm the more serious, like not <laughs> side, I I think. And this goes back to like the vows, right? Like you balance like my seriousness with your goofiness. That's where what she gets right she gets the silly like playful singing like side like from you which is which is fun like yeah. the laughing the or, yeah the play like... so literally as he will like bounce a balloon and <laughs> she will just like crack <laughs> up like, <laughs> like in tears crying <laughs> So. I wish we still had that as adults. To be yeah, clear. yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. Distraction here. Know, know, <laughs> the innocent. Yeah. What sort of values do you hope to instill into Amelia and maybe future kids? Good question. I think just being a good person and being kind and always doing the right thing. Mm. Um, I think I think that's what I, I would hope that she like whether she's playing with other kids or she's interacting with other people, just being like, you know, a good person and um, like trying to always do the right thing, I would think. But I don't know. Uh, I, was, I, I agree with that. Um, I just, yeah, I think if we can teach her that every, everyone is the same. We're all, you know, we're all born, we're all humans. Mm -hmm. um, so if you feel something, someone else is going to feel the same thing. So, you know, um, Kind of like to treat people how you would want to be treated mm -hmm. type of thing is kind of how I would uh, mm -hmm. instill. It's like the main value mm -hmm. I want to instill with her. That's a biblical principle. Yeah. What kind of household do you guys want to raise your kids in? Good question. Um, I don't want to say like the whole like gentle parenting approach, but probably like I, I don't know how to. Um, I think we both don't want our our childhood experiences. I'll say that. <laughs> Maybe what, that, what does that mean? So, like, in terms of, I think we want like the communication between us to be to be better than our parents' communication mm -hmm. was, so that we can show Amelia what it's you know what a good relationship's like, so she can seek that in the future rather than you know not see a good relationship mm -hmm. and possibly you know, see that as what is, it was like is the norm, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we, we, we want to show her that communication is important and that just like that, she had happy, that she can share everything. Yeah, exactly. Like parents. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I never want to make her feel that she can't like share anything with mm. us. Yeah. Fun fact. I used to be a very terrible, um, like I had a bad habit of lying in my household because my mom would react to things that I told her. Shout out, mom, if you're ever watching this. She would react <laughs> so terribly to things that yeah. I'd, sh I'd share. Yeah. Sometimes they were bad things. Yeah. And she had merit to act <laughs> right. act in a certain way. Yeah. But because there was that negative reaction, whenever I had to share something, I would associate like sharing with that reaction. So yeah. I'd just keep it to myself or fifth. And so that was a bad problem. But that guess what? Through. It's funny because now that you say that, I'm like thinking about my life. I'm like... <laughs> My mom was kind of like that, and I kind of like lied and stuff. Like maybe I did. 
Same thing. I'm sure a lot of kids yeah, do that though, yeah, right? But sense. I think like then having that, you don't want to be like a friend to your parent mm. or your children, but having that relationship where Shh, they feel comfortable, comfortable to yeah. come to you with like, you know, you can tell me anything and I won't have like that reaction mm-hmm. in there. But that's easier said than done, yeah, right? There's still that protective like parent side of yeah. you, but... I, I think as a parent, if your child, when it comes to like discipline, obviously you don't really know when your child's a toddler, there's like the things that you can reprimand yeah. and discipline. Right. But when you get into that, having a a, a conscious decision making. Like a teenager. You know, man, a teenager. Yeah. I can't speak for it, but yeah. I would hope that I would balance out fairly well. I would balance out being able to dis- discipline and reprimand, but also being on the line of of knowing like don't be outrageous about it. Yeah. Do, you know, if it doesn't if they're acting in a way that doesn't align with our values and with our beliefs, with our principles, then yes, they must be corrected. It's it's a principle for a parent to correct hmm. a yeah. child. Right. But you don't want to correct overcorrect yeah. so terribly that you just end up not knowing what's going on in this kid's life because they dis- they distance themselves. Yeah from you right so that's probably a hard balance i'm sure mm-hmm. no parent ever wants their kid to distance yeah. themselves from them so i can't speak like oh i know what i'm doing yet yeah. because i don't but well, um, the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. well it's good to say like you want to yeah to, to foster an environment where yeah share whatever with me yeah like that's a really good environment to want to yeah. foster yeah um cool so what sort of little things do you two do for one another that you feel help your relationship out. You want me to go? Sorry, okay. Um, that's a hard question. <laughs> oh my goodness, hold on, I need a minute. I can answer. Go ahead. So are, do you want me to say the little so, things yeah. I do for her? Or, or vice or versa? Like, like I guess, like, the, okay, yeah. so I guess like day-to-day things, right? Like yeah. if there's something, this is so like my new, right? Mm-hmm. So Brian, like to make like um like a shake or whatever and he usually has it at the end of the night because it's something he enjoys so if i'm in the kitchen and i'm doing something i try to make sure that it's clean and washed so that he has it at night Mm. i don't necessarily like consciously i'm like but i just like unconsciously do it does Mm. that make sense Uh, yeah i don't know that's like a bad example i I mean i was if you're talking about that this is a really it's a little thing (laughs) but um yeah yeah, like i'll when i i'll put on her like a clean pillowcase Before we, we have like little things stuff. like it. Yeah, like stuff like that. Um, well, these are the little things add up. They so do. So what are these little things? So yeah. it's like, I think we kind of like split up the household yeah. household tasks. Mm-hmm. And then within those household tasks, if there's like, a if someone has a particularity, we like try, try to, to respect, respect that. That, right? that, yeah. that part. So I'm trying to think like, like I, again, we like, if I'm folding the laundry, I'll put her, her, um, her, pill, her like clean pillowcase on. Um, well just things like that like doing the laundry or dish. just like yeah you know we do i think we do a good job at that like but, since i if i'm doing a lot of like amelia's care like you pick up a lot of the households yeah. she'll, things, exactly like, she'll, right like she'll be like feeding amelia while i'm like folding clothes yeah. or something yeah, yeah. Like, but, free marriage i never gave that any thought yeah. yeah before you move in with someone you don't really think about working together to keep a space clean yeah and tidy yeah Bryn was way better at it than me Six. But there was stressors where I had the expectation as she brought this all to the table. She's so good at it. We'll just leave it in her court. But then it comes down to her thinking she or knowing yeah. she's doing everything and me not realizing it. Mm-hmm. And it just took a conversation. Mm-hmm. Hey, like, this is a lot. She, I mean, I give, I give her kudos for saying, hey, this is a lot. Mm. Like, how can we make this better? Yeah. And for me, having the humility to say, like, oh, I did notice you're doing everything. And <laughs> how, can, <I> did. How, <laughs> how can we do this? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds terrible. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's what, that's what <laughs> I felt when I was saying my part. That, like, I, that I, I happens, feel awful I, saying I, this. Like, I feel like that happens, though, a lot. I'm sure. Right? Yeah, like, I'm sure. It's and I don't want to be like more to like women, but no, I does. feel like it does. Like a lot of times women take on yeah. a lot and then, but it does, the communication piece is, is important, right? You don't want to be like, I'm drowning in all this stuff and not say anything yeah. and then expect the person. And I think that would be like my flaw, right? Like I have an expectation like, oh, you see me struggling, right? Yeah. Like step in, but. That's where I think we both, I think that's our like, that's like thing we can work on is, yeah, is like if we're, yeah, sometimes if we're stressed, we like assume things mm-hmm. that the other person is is like in tune to them tune, or yeah. like yeah. can read my yeah. mind. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Minds cannot be read. Nope. 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 
And I'm, I, I, I want to have a household where I encourage everyone to speak your mind when you're feeling something. Yeah. Because I literally may have no idea what's going yeah. on. And if you look like you're killing it and you're like, 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 <laughs> keep, keep going, like, yeah, you're exactly. great out here. Exactly. Like, what am I supposed to say? Yeah. It, it, it takes maturity to no, know I this, though. Yeah. And maturity to say, like, um, what can I do? Yeah. Yeah. Tell me what to do. Yeah. yeah. And I'll do it. Yeah. And, um, and sometimes it has to be revisited. Yeah. Um, it has to be shifted, shaped, changed. Yeah. Um, what things i know you talked about um health a little bit on your end but what things do you do for yourselves mm -hmm. that you feel helps you be a stronger individual a good spouse and a great parent you can start because i <laughs> well uh, i was gonna say besides like the health um i mean i do like i try to i, I know this kind of, kind of sounds funny but i do try to listen to like podcasts and mm -hmm. stuff that have like a a po positive influence on my thinking um just how i think and how i approach life mm -hmm. um i don't know i feel like that this is where i have issues right so i i don't do as much self-care things as i should yeah and pre amelia and you know they always say like have a plan right you have a baby you have to take care of yourself so i had all these things that i was like oh i'll do all of these things to make sure you know but reality happens and it doesn't work out that way what i wrote on a piece of paper on my phone <laughs> didn't happen and but we're like i'm getting back to it and, and i am like trying to make steps towards it but that's that's something i struggle with like yeah. I, I don't take care of myself as much as i should i think we both too um we we haven't done it in a while but we like we used to like pray at night mm -hmm. and I yeah. think we, we need to get we like we're talking about getting back to like praying mm -hmm. together um i think that'll That'll help us mm -hmm. be better parents to, and yeah. just better to each other. Want to hear a fun fact, Alan? Yeah. So I was under, I'm sharing so many misconceptions today. <laughs> I was under the misconception that um, couples who attend church together yeah. have longer lasting, happier marriages. Mm -hmm. I thought for sure like that was the truth. It wasn't the fact. In fact, there was almost half of those who attend church together split or divorce, divorced. Interesting. Fun fact, less than 1% of couples who pray together get, get divorced, which means 99% of couples that pray together wow. stay together. Whoa, that sounded that, great. 99% of couples that yeah. pray together yeah. stay together. That's an interesting fact. Because I know it we always talk about going to church, deeper, but I feel like you're... the act of going doesn't necessarily... I mean, it's a great thing. Mm -hmm. It's really hard with kids, right, to, to be able to especially if you're not sleeping get them out of the house mm -hmm. do everything to be there on time and i even think when you're in church it's like it's you and god where if you're praying together it's it's us and god mm. yeah where mm -hmm. your church or you're you know you're next to each other but you're like i don't know it's it's more of like you're just it could almost be a little distracting yeah, too, right? like you don't yeah, necessarily exactly. i think it's like you said more what um the couple intimate and personal yeah. i guess but yeah but yeah, we did we did that a lot when we dated, yeah. and then the beginning of our marriage. Yeah, yeah we we need to get back on onto mm -hmm. that. We read um Amelia a a book about like God mm -hmm. before she sleeps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think we need to get back into praying mm -hmm. right after that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Could be at any time of the day. Yeah. yeah. I know. At night. Yeah. We when we started um. our breakfast prayers mm -hmm. became monotonous and almost meaningless because they were like, they were almost like scripts because we would just do them. Just do it like, like to yeah, do it. Mindless. Thanks for this food. Thanks for getting this dress. Like, and they still sometimes feel that way. And sometimes yeah. we put things that are more meaningful mm. when we, when we um, turn to God, but it's the, 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 the time outside of those normal, those regular prayers that are the most meaningful. Mm -hmm. And that's what we learned at least. Um, but yeah, I encourage you guys to keep doing that. Yeah. You know, you know, you know what you got to rock and roll yeah. with. Um, relationships, dating, marriage, weddings, parenting. Is there anything else that you two want to share with the world that we, we may not have talked about? <laughs> um, I, I mean, I feel like we, we talked about a lot, but mm -hmm. we touched on communication. I think that's probably like, I think it's the foundation, right? Before you get married, 
before you have children, you have a foundation with someone. And I think just like going back and remembering that, mm -hmm. just remembering, you know, I don't want to say your roots, but like kind of, and you're always going to build on something. But if, as things go not wrong, but if they're challenging, you face difficulty, being able to go back to that foundation and being like, you know, it was strong at one point. So just remembering that. Well, Juliet, Brian, thank you two for joining us on the Capturing Your Love Show. I'm excited to watch you two grow, watch Amelia grow, and see how you continue to grow as a couple and expand your family. Thanks. So thank you again. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Yeah.